Normal subgroups, as you will soon see in this course, are very important, and it's always handy to have some equivalent definitions of important things, and that's what we're going to get today. There are two common definitions. Each one is sometimes used as the primary definition of normal subgroup in abstract algebra textbooks. The definition we've been using is this one. A subgroup H of a group G is a normal subgroup if it's closed with respect to to conjugates, meaning for any element a in the subgroup H, x a x inverse is also in H for every x in the group G. That's what it means for H to be a normal subgroup. Link in the description to my lesson introducing normal subgroups if you need a recap. The other common definition is that a subgroup is normal if its left cosets are the same as its right cosets, and we're going to prove those definitions are equivalent. If H is a subgroup of a group G, we're proving that H is a normal subgroup by this definition we've been using, if and only if each left coset AH equals the corresponding right coset HA for every A in G. Let's begin the proof. We'll begin by assuming that H is a normal subgroup, and then we'll prove its left cosets and right cosets are equal by proving that they are subsets of each other, and then we'll do the reverse direction. Let H be a normal subgroup of G and A some element from the group G. Then take X, some element X, from the left coset AH. By definition of a left coset, that means X equals A times H for some subgroup element H. But since H is normal, we know that the conjugate of H, A, H, A inverse, must also belong to the subgroup H, again, because it's normal, so it's closed with respect to conjugates. So we already know that X is equal to AH since it comes from this left coset, but we could rewrite AH as AHA inverse times A, because the A inverse and the A would cancel out and just leave AH. So you can see why this equation is true. Now, why is it important? Well, it's important because we know that this element must belong to the right coset HA. We know that because as we pointed out, the conjugate right here is an element of H. So AHA inverse times A has the form of an element of the right coset HA. It's something from H times A. So this means that X must be an element of HA. X was taken to be an arbitrary element of AH, the left coset. We've shown that it also belongs to the right coset. That means any left coset AH must be a subset of the corresponding right coset HA. I'm not going to walk you through it, but we could do the exact same process to show that the right coset HA is a subset of the left coset AH. Thus, each left coset AH equals the corresponding right coset HA. The reverse direction of the proof is perhaps even easier. Now, still H is a subgroup of G, we're going to assume that each left coset AH equals the corresponding right coset H A, and with this assumption, we want to prove that H is a normal subgroup. So we'll take an arbitrary element from the subgroup H and an arbitrary element X from the group G. We need to show that the conjugate X H X inverse is also an element of H to show that it's closed with respect to conjugates. We do know, since the left and right cosets are the same, that XH is an element of the left coset XH just by definition of the left coset, but also since the left cosets are equal to their corresponding right cosets, that means that XH is also an element of the right coset HX. But by definition, of course, that means that XH must be equal to some element of H times X. So we could write that XH equals H prime X for some H prime in the subgroup H. Again, it's by definition of the left coset that the arbitrary group element X times the arbitrary subgroup element H must be an element of the left coset XH. 
and then it's because the left and right cosets are equal that that's an element of the right coset, and then it's by definition of a right coset that this is equal to h prime x for some h prime in the subgroup h. But that's pretty much all we need. We can then multiply both sides of this equation on the right by x inverse. On the right side, the x and x inverse cancel out, and what we end up with is x h x inverse equals h prime. But h prime was taken from the subgroup h. So we've shown that x h x inverse is an element of the subgroup H. Thus, it's closed with respect to conjugates, and thus, it's a normal subgroup. Again, remember that H was an arbitrary subgroup element, and X was an arbitrary group element. So, in this last step, where we multiply both sides of the equation by X inverse on the right, that is sufficient to show entirely that the subgroup H is closed with respect to conjugates. And that completes the proof. Now, we've got two equivalent definitions for normal subgroup. If H is a subgroup of a group G, then H is a normal subgroup, meaning it's closed with respect to conjugates, if and only if its left cosets are equal to its right cosets. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and if you find these abstract algebra videos helpful, please consider supporting Wrath of Math on Patreon. Link in the description, it's a huge help. Thanks for watching. Get an even, open myself up from this